Uh, so good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank Rosanna and Rita and Melissa for doing such a wonderful job putting this uh, day together. I know that there's a challenge up ahead of us to talk about such a tough topic, but I know that the talented people in this room will help us to get to where we need to be. So unfortunately, I have no financial disclosures. <laughs> Uh, the outline of my talk today is really to take you on a brief journey about physician burnout and to really present to you what are the different initiatives that have been happening in the emergency medicine specialty and also on the national level, which I think we all should be aware of. And lastly, to talk about next steps, which is really why all of you are here. So when we look at the history of burnout, it's really interesting to know that this concept of burnout has been there for many, many years. And in fact, in 1966, Donna Bedian was the one to correlate work satisfaction with the idea of quality of services. And also in 1970, McGrath came up with the terminology work stress. In 1974, uh, Frudenberger came up with this idea of work disease and defining what work disease was, and also noted that burnout syndrome existed and that it was much more higher in the health professionals. In 1982, Maslach defined the burnout syndrome. I'm sure many of you are aware of the gold standard that we use now known as the Maslach Burnout Inventory, which really deals with the three major characteristic features of depersonalization, emotional exhaustion, and also lack of personal fulfillment. So what about the research aspect of burnout? and took, looking at clinician well-being and resilience. Again, you can see that there have been manuscripts published all the way back to the 1980s. In this particular article that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 1982, entitled The Effects of Stress on Physicians and Their Medical Practice, they looked at all the different stressors that are present in the life of a physician and how the coping mechanisms and the adaptive mechanisms that they utilized really had a huge impact on how well they were doing at work. In 1985, this really important study came out in the journal of uh, in JAMA, titled Health Status, Job Satisfaction, Job Stress, and Life Satisfaction Between Academic versus Clinical Faculty. It was very interesting to note that they did not find any significant difference in the rates of depression, anxiety, or issues related to job satisfaction or work stress between the two groups. But as you can see on the right side of the screen, I think a lot of us in academic medicine can relate to this, that the academic faculty were found to have longer work hours, had less vacation time, had more time spent in research and in teaching, less time in the clinical arena, and really had more conflict trying to deal with a balance between the work and home environment. They also had more time pressures to deal with and unfortunately felt less financially stable. In 1997, Christina Maslach authored her epic book titled The Truth About Burnout. This really is a fantastic book. If you have not looked at it yet and not read it, please take a moment in the future to read it. This really set the stage to talk about, it's not just about the individual issues. It really must be seen that physician burnout is linked to organizational problems. And her conclusion really was to charge the organizations to develop guidelines and strategies for eradicating the underlying problems within an organization that are the true source of burnout. In 2002, this study was published, which looked at mid-career burnout in the generalist and specialist physicians. This was an interesting study because not only did they define burnout and the sources of burnout, but they also looked at personal factors and personality factors of physicians and how they integrated with the stressors that people deal with in the work and in the home environment. And in 2012, Tate Shanafelt, which I'm sure many of you are aware of this name and should get very familiar with this name, uh, he is a leader in researching physician burnout and really advancing the concept of clinician well-being and resilience. Uh, this is, was a really epic article that talked about burnout and satisfaction with work-life balance among U.S. physicians relative to the general U.S. population. And he concluded that burnout is more common among physicians than other U.S. workers. 
and physicians that were at the front line were at the highest risk of developing burnout. And who are those physicians at the front line? Uh, us, emergency medicine, internal medicine, and family medicine. As I'm sure over the last several years, you've seen pictures like this and also have read articles in newspapers, magazines, and have really understood that physician burnout is now a national crisis that we really need to address. In 2016, Shanna Felt and his team published this article known as the Longitudinal Study Evaluating the Association Between Physician Burnout and Changes in Professional Work Effort. This is, again, a landmark study which really looked at the fact that the higher the physician burnout level, the less the job satisfaction, and the deteriorating aspect of work effort in the work environment. So creating that link that we all know exists, but now we can have the evidence in front of us. And then in 2017, this is again a very important article. If you have not read this, you definitely should. Uh, Shanna Felt published this article, which was titled Executive Leadership and Physician Wellbeing, Nine Organizational Strategies to Promote Engagement and Reduce Burnout. In this article, he really looked at the consequences of physician burnout, not only in the work environment, but also in the personal life of physicians. And they also looked at the various drivers that lead to burnout. So as you can see on this slide, on the left side, I know that we're all familiar with this, but it's one thing to sit in the room with your colleague and talk about it, and it's another to read it in an article that really establishes the evidence behind it. And as you can see here, consequences of physician burnout are related to, in the personal arena, broken relationships, physicians that now turn to alcohol and illicit drug use, creating this concept of substance use disorders that are higher in the physician population, also leading to depression and the unfortunate circumstance of physician suicide that I know we've all dealt with in some way, shape, or form. When we look at physician burnout in the professional arena, Again, I will say that I've had many conversations with my colleagues about we know that physician burnout will lead to increased turnover. We know this, but now we have the evidence behind it to support that fact. And in the professional environment, we know that physician burnout can lead to decreased quality of care, increased medical errors, decreased patient satisfaction, and a decreased productivity of the employer, employees, and also can lead to an increased physician turnover. In this article, they also looked at the various drivers towards burnout. And as you can see, there are many things that are very important for us to look at. Examples such as organizational culture and the values. So what exactly is the culture in the institution that you work at? Does it promote physician well-being? Does it promote resilience in its employees? And also examples such as work-life integration. How do you create that balance? Does that balance even exist? Are there factors that we can look at that will promote that work-life integration? Obviously, in the more optimal situation, you will have physicians that are more uh, feeling an environment of a team effort. And of course, if it's a less optimal situation, then that is what will lead to physician burnout, cynicism in faculty and in-house staff, and also inefficacy, inefficacy at work. So why all the attention now? I personally think it's a moral imperative. Um, as someone who trains residents every day, I want to make sure that we do our due diligence in creating an environment that will help them have the longevity that I wish for for myself in the field of emergency medicine. We're also very lucky that the ACGME over the last couple of years realized that physician suicide clinician well-being and resilience are important factors that we need to partake in in the residency training arena. I'm sure many of you have seen these pictures that are very familiar to us. The ACGME now has a program requirement, Section 6, which really has now made it mandatory for program directors and institutions to look at the work compression environment to look at the work intensity that our residents are going through and also has now made it mandatory for us to have access to the resources that they need in order to deal with physician burnout, depression, suicide, and the like. 
So what are we doing in emergency medicine? I have to say that it is an honor and a privilege to be here today amongst many of you that are our close friends and colleagues. And in 2017, I'd like to highlight Dr. Jay Kaplan, uh, who represented ASEP at the time. He was ASEP president, I was court president, and we were in this all EM national organization meeting that SAM had hosted. And we all in that meeting, all of these major players, as we would say, of organizations were in a room together and we realized that all of us wanted to focus on physician well-being and resilience. And hence, uh, we created this concept of having the first ever Emergency Medicine Wellness and Resilience Summit, which took place in February of 2017. Representatives from all the major 10 EM organizations and also representatives from the ACGME and AMA were in one room together to look at this as a specialty problem and how we could address this. These were the various organizations that were represented and I'm happy to say that each of these organizations are doing their best and trying to promote their initiatives for their constituents and that is really important for us to understand. So we as a specialty need to band together but I want to recognize the effort that's being made at every single organizational level um, representing emergency medicine and what they are trying to do for their constituents. Now speaking of hot off the press, and I know that this was referred to earlier, uh, they, I was preparing my, artic, uh, my uh, presentation for this and I noticed that this was an article in press at the time, but Dr. Michelle Lin uh, with her colleagues, including Arlene, published this article no, which was titled High Prevalence of Burnout Among U.S. Emergency Medicine Residents results from the 2017 National Emergency Medicine Wellness Survey. This is the first ever survey done of emergency medicine residents in the United States and looking at the prevalence of burnout in that group, which was again quoted earlier as being approximately 76%. This should make us pause and think about what we are doing for the future of our specialty. And hopefully today with your help and your expertise and your input, we can move this forward. Again, in preparation for this talk, another article in press, which is now uh, going to be, I believe, an article that many of us are going to turn to, Shanna Felt and his team published this, entitled Changes in Burnout and Satisfaction with Work-Life Integration in Physicians and the General U.S. Working Population between 2011 and 2017. As you can see on this slide set, he basically compared the prevalence of burnout in the various specialties at 2011, 2014, 2017, you can see where the red arrows are. There's maybe a little bit of difference, but not that much. And on the right side of the screen, you can see the percentage of satisfaction with work-life integration. All I can say is we have a lot of work to do, but I know that we can get it done. He compared these data points with the general U.S. working population and you can see that again, physicians in general are dealing with a lot more burnout and having difficulty in being satisfied with their work-life integration. So I now want to move to what is very important for all of us to be aware of. Emergency medicine can continue to work in a silo, but that is not what we anticipate and that is not what we want to do. We have been very fortunate that the National Academy of Medicine understood that this is a national crisis for all specialties, and they created the Action Collaborative on Clinician Wellbeing and Resilience. There are over 100 organizations that are now sponsoring this and are participating in this Action Collaborative, where basically the goal is to improve baseline understanding of challenges to clinician well-being, to raise the visibility of clinician stress and burnout, to elevate the evidence-based multidisciplinary solutions that will improve patient care by caring for the caregiver. So if you go to their website, you will see these data points, these numbers that are very alarming. Physicians die by suicide each year, about, four, about 400 physicians die every year, which is approximately twice that of the general population. The percentage of physicians with depression remain alarmingly high, and I think it's very important for us to understand that these numbers are not going to go away. It is really us that needs to move this forward and to look at these issues so that we can address these numbers in the future. 
So what came out of this National Academy of Medicine Action Collaborative? Many important things are being worked on, but then I would like to recognize Dr. Timothy Brigham, who's going to be one of our keynote speakers later this afternoon from the ACGME, and again, Dr. Jay Kaplan, that authored this discussion paper entitled, A Journey to Construct an All-Encompassing Conceptual Model of Factors Affecting Clinician Well-Being and Resilience. And this, my friends, is why we're here today. When we look at what the Action Collaborative has done, they basically have highlighted a conceptual model of factors affecting clinician well-being and resilience. They have these various categories that we know now, based on the literature that's out there and the evidence that these factors must be looked at much more closely. Factors related to personal issues, skills and abilities, healthcare responsibilities, learning practice and environment, organizational factors, rules and regulation, regulations, and society and culture. They all, they all have a role to play and really interact with each other about how we can advance physician well-being. Amongst all these factors, the goal here is not for you to read every word on this slide, but the goal here is for you to understand that there are many sub-factors related to these. And this is really why we are turning to you to help us deal with this concept of coming up with solutions that can address these various factors. I want to close over the next few minutes with data that is, again, hot off the press. Medscape establishes a report every year known as the National Physician Burnout and Depression Suicide Report. Obviously, it's dependent on how many people are the survey respondents, which shows you here the percentage distribution within the specialties. You can see that male respondents were more than females, and you can see which physicians are most burnt out. And yet again, emergency medicine is towards the top. They asked what contributes most of your burnout. Not surprisingly, it's systems issues, organizational issues that we need to conquer in order to move ahead. They also asked which physicians are more likely to seek professional help. And this is what makes me really sad, that emergency physicians, although we deal with this issue, we are really not seeking the help that we need. And perhaps maybe this group can come up with research questions and solutions that can deal with this issue as well. They also asked which physicians are happiest at work. This made me really sad, but I'm not going to leave on a sad note. This is really why we're here today. It's to look at basically this conceptual model of factors that we now know have been well established. So no longer is the conversation of where do we start, what's the problem. We know where to start. We know where the problem is. We know that we need to ask those important research questions so that we can come up with the solutions to in hopefully move our specialty in the right direction and have wonderful future physicians who can then become emergency physicians for a lifelong career. So today, the idea here is that we will be breaking up into groups, looking at these major categories of the conceptual model to look at those individual and uh, organizational factors that really are the crux of the issue that we're dealing with and to hopefully come up with research questions that will help us develop solutions. So what are the next steps? This is the next step. Being here today, I want to thank you again. I know that many of us have a lot of stuff that we need to do, but you took the time out of your very busy schedule to not only attend SAM, but to attend this consensus conference. And again, I want to thank Rita and Rosanna for putting this together. It really is a true honor and a privilege to be a part of this amazingly talented group. The idea here today is to develop research questions that we can then conduct studies for and then hopefully disseminate the knowledge through publication and also dissemination and hopefully implement the solutions for our specialty. Thank you very much. It has been an honor and a privilege to be here today.
don't need this. Um, I'm Linda Davis Moon. I'm from Thomas Jefferson University. I'm the past president of AAAEM, which is the Academic Administrators for Emergency Medicine. I'm not a physician. Uh, I'm going to venture to guess I may be the only non-physician in the room. Uh, uh, one more. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, and just quickly, uh, for the first time ever, AAEM, the administrators group under SAEM, under the chairs group, has its first inaugural wellness committee from the administrator's perspective that takes in the wellness of the entire department. And so I am the grateful recipient of being the first chair of that group. Looking forward to working with everyone. Hi, uh, my name is Lynn Wynn. I'm a third year at Florida State University. I'll be one of the MSAs helping you guys out. Kristen Norton Holtz, University of Colorado. In the interest of time, I'm going to move it along. I'm Vank Belenconda from Mayo in Minnesota. Sorb Candwell from Ohio State University. You've already met me and Rita. Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Bernard Chang. I'm over at uh, Columbia University. Hi, I'm Jenny Castillo, also from Columbia Uni University. Hi, I'm Fran, I'm a resident from Maimonides. Ketrin Tyler from UC Davis. Fiona Gallagher, University of Washington. David Chestnut, University of Illinois. Shanna Ross, University of Illinois. Ted Melnick from Yale. I'm Stella Tung from Queen's University, Kingston, Ontario, Canada. Miranda West, University of Virginia. Corey Poffenberger from Stanford. Emily Hirsch, Prisma Health Upstate, South Carolina. Hi, Larissa Coldabella, also Prisma Health in Greenville, South Carolina. Hi, I'm Dixon Chung from the University of Colorado. Good morning, Sharon Griswold from Drexel University. Jeffrey Hom, Stony Brook University. Linda Herman, Quia Delta Emergency Medicine Program, UCI Irvine's affiliate. McKenna Snyder, Penn State Hershey. I'm um, Naila Lemoudi, um, Imam Abdurrahman Ben Faisal University, Saudi Arabia. Hi, I'm Rob Lamb from the University of Colorado. Uh, Felix Aiko, Regents Hospital, Minnesota. Anahita Calentary, Penn State Health, Hershey Medical System. Caroline Dowers, I'm from Henry Ford in Detroit. Andrea Perpera from Indiana University. I'm Cheryl Campos, I'm from Salinas Valley Memorial, California, and I'm here as an Emergency Nurses Association liaison. Jeff Manko, NYU Bellevue, New York, New York. Alicia Polarski, Medical College of Wisconsin. Uh, Maria Marrera from Denver Health in Colorado. Hi, I'm Dorothy Shi. I'm from Mount Sinai Beth Israel, a resident with Dr. Actor. Judy Linden, Boston Medical Center and Boston University School of Medicine. Dave Lou, Maine Medical Center. Mark Courtney, Northwestern Chicago. Aaron Thomas, a resident at West Virginia University. Hannah Hughes, University of Cincinnati, MR President-Elect. Como Gersahani, Washington University in St. Louis. Ryan Descamp, University of Chicago, and I'm representing AAM RSA. Nahal Naik from George Washington University, I'm the incoming Rams president. Rachel Shane, med student from Ohio State University. Ken Elkin, med student from Wayne State University. Katie Sumter from University of Iowa. Uh, Andrew Manfra from Florida International University. Um, Kyle Ackerman from Howard University College of Medicine. Alessandra Della Porta from the University of Miami. Uh, John Farrow, University of Cincinnati. Anine Picard, UC Davis. Dan Lakoff from Wild Cornell in New York. James O'Shea from Emory in Atlanta. 
Sonia Lee Sauerwein, Ohio State University. Katie Revelo from Harvard UCLA. Uh, Arlene Chung, I'm the program director at Maimonides Medical Center in Brooklyn, New York. Ted Christopher Thomas Jefferson, Sydney Kimball Medical College in Philadelphia. So our, our topic is social cultural changes and that have an effect on resilience, physician uh, resilience and wellness. It's kind of a diverse uh, set of uh, topics that are looked at, but things like uh, patient behaviors and how that affects uh, physician performance. Um, a little bit about um, uh, physician wellness and reporting that, uh, issues with that and how that might affect the physician in terms of wellness. Many people know that if, um, if you're depressed or you have some other issue, medical issue, that if you report it, you tend to be chastised by your medical boards, and we would like to see some end to that. Um, so a very divorce, uh, d diverse uh, topic group. Also uh, a little bit about um, social determinants of health. We look at media portrayal. We didn't find a whole lot there in terms of wellness, but um, it's a very diverse topic, but it's more of the how does the culture affect physician wellness and how does physician wellness affect the culture. So that's kind of the, the spin on our section. So we're going to be looking at the things that you do instead of yoga and meditating. So because we all know you can't meditate your way into wellness anymore. It's really the system. So we're going to be looking at some of the system factors that have been researched so far, come up with some good research questions that bright researchers can do in the future, and then put those out there. And so we'll be focusing on the real organizational, departmental, and institutional factors. I could probably just put my mama voice on and wouldn't need the microphone, but what we're going to be talking about in our section is everything that happens in the space in which we work, which includes the learning and didactics that happen in our space. It's the actual execution of the practice itself and how colleagues work together in that space. And by colleagues, I mean even broader than just the physician panel that's working in that space. And then last but not least, we're going to touch on the environment in which we work, which touches things like workplace violence issues, healthcare IT, and the actual platform in which we are doing that practice. So that'll be the three main areas that we're going to be talking. Thank you. All right, let's take a quick 15. I, I do. So uh, breakout uh, uh, four is entitled Who Really Cares? It's really the effect of healthcare responsibilities on uh, our responsibilities on, on uh, physician wellness and clinician wellness. So we're going to look at the balance of uh, responsibilities in terms of clinical, academic, research, uh, teaching. Uh, and we're going to look in particular at what gaps have been done, are there gaps, and do we have any information with regard to solutions. 
We're going to look at location of practice. Most research has been done in academic facilities. What do we know about academic versus clinical, rural versus urban, and do um, social determinants of health? Does your patient population have anything, have any effect in terms of um, clinician well-being? We're going to look at generational differences because burnout for someone who is a resident is different from burnout from someone who's in early career, mid-career, and late career. And then uh, as part of that, we also need to look potentially at gender and race differences. And finally, as emergency physicians, we have a lot of responsibility and sometimes not a lot of authority. And so we need to look at how do we research that. So we're going to look at current research. We're going to pose questions as we go along and ask for people's input. Uh, in some ways, we have prob probably the most accessible topic and probably the one that's had the most research on it already, but it's looking at um, the intersection of individual traits, personality traits, um, our social structures that we live in, engagement in work, and looking at some financial aspects of well-being, um, mostly focused, I think, in the areas that have been explored the most, although in some ways this is sort of ground zero where a lot of the change happens. Hi, so thank you. Our session is really talking about the skills and abilities that we hope that everyone has acquired by the time they become an emergency medicine faculty, uh, such as communication skills, coping skills, mentorship, delegation, organizational skills of an individual. Um, I have to say that overlooking at the research, a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about is things that you can actually bring into the environment that can help you master these skill sets at the organizational level. So dealing with your colleagues, dealing in a multi-specialty sport that we have. Um, so I encourage uh, those of you that are interested to join our group. There has been some research that's been done on these various sub-factors, but there's a lot more research questions that we can generate together as a group. So thank you.